So far, creating an API in .NET involves generating a bunch of files like program.cs, which is the entry point of your application, startup.cs, which is used to configure dependency injection and middlewares, controller to handle HTTP request, and not to mention the repositories and services. This looks heavy when all we want is to create a simple API. In this tutorial, we will use .NET 6 to create an API for create, read, update, and delete operations on a database that stores books. In the end, we will have fewer files than usual. The API will be more simple. My name is Pat. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing because it motivates me to make more videos. Let's get into it. Let's create a new project in Visual Studio 2022. At the time I'm recording this video, it's still in preview. I choose the ASP.NET Core empty template. I give a name to the project. Then I choose the .NET 6 framework. You have to install it first and it's also in preview. I uncheck the box configure for HTTPS and I create the project. If we take a look at the files generated by Visual Studio, you can see that there are two files to work with. Program.cs, the entry point of the application, and app settings.json for storing configuration settings. If you pay attention, you will see that the file program.cs does not contain a namespace, class definition, or declaration of the main method. This is possible thanks to a feature available since C Sharp 9 called top level statements. This is handy because it allows treating the file as a script. In this file, an endpoint that returns the string hello world is already defined. If I run the project, you can see a web page that displays the text hello world. Before moving further, I will turn off the launch of the browser because I will use Postman to test the API. Our API will interact with a SQL Server database, so I need to install two NuGet packages to achieve this task. Microsoft.entity framework core and Microsoft.entity framework core.sql server. Now let's create a class that will inherit from the DB context class. So this will be used to interact with the database. I call it book context. The book context must expose a property that represents the book table. Let's start by creating this class. It exposes properties like the identifier, the title, the author, and the description of the book. Once our book model is defined, we can expose it in the DB context. So before using the database, it's a good idea to declare the connection string in the application configuration file. The data access is configured. Let's go back to the program.cs file. We will register the DB context for dependency injection. The builder object exposes a services property. We use the add DB context method, specifying the book context type, and we pass the connection string. Now let's create an endpoint to retrieve a list of book. We use the app variable. We select the map get method because the endpoint will process an HTTP get request. The first argument is a string that specifies the root. And the second argument is a Lambda expression that acts as a root handler. I set the book context as a parameter of the Lambda expression this will allow the injection of a book context instance in the function. In the body of the Lambda expression, 
I can use the DB context to fetch books. Because the lambda expression has only one line, we can write it as a body expression. Let's run the application. I can send a GET request, and I get a list of books. The endpoint works. Let's create an endpoint that will allow retrieving a book by its identifier. We will use the map get method again because it's still an HTTP get request. In the root, I specify a placeholder for the identifier. In the definition of the Lambda expression, I declare the book context that will be injected. I also declare a parameter named ID. It's going to capture the identifier in the root. In the body of the Lambda expression, I use the book context to find a book by its ID. Let's run the application. In Postman, I copy the identifier of an existing book. If I send a request with the identifier, you can see that I received the book in the response. Now let's create an endpoint to insert a new book. This time we need the map post method because we will handle an HTTP post request. In the definition of the Lambda expression, in addition to the data context declaration, I define a parameter of type book, which will allow capturing the payload of the request. In the body of the function, I use the book context to insert a book in the database. After the book is saved, I use the method accepted on the result class to return an HTTP accepted status code. Let's run the application. I can execute the query. Let's check the result. A new book has been inserted. Now let's create an endpoint to update a book. We use the map put method because we will handle an HTTP put request. In the root, I define a placeholder for the identifier of the book I want to update. The Lambda expression takes three parameters, the book context, the ID we will capture in the root, and the payload of the request. In the body of the function, I check if the identifier in the root matches the one in the payload. If it's not the case, I return a bad request using the results object. Otherwise, I update the book in the database and return a no content status code. Let's run the application. I will send a put request with the ID of an existing book. I also copy the body of the JSON for this book and I change the description. If I send the request, we can see that the status code of the response is 204, no content. Let's get the list of all books. We can see that the book has been updated. Finally, we will create an endpoint for the deletion of a book. We use the map delete method because we will handle an HTTP delete request. The ID of the book to delete is placed in the root. The logic to delete the book is straightforward. Let's run the application. I take the identifier of an existing book and put it in a delete request. If I send the request, I get a status code that tells me the request works. Let's check in the list of all book. The book has been deleted. This is how you can create an API in a simple way with 
.NET 6. This tutorial ends here. The link to the code will be in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.